Good morning and welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. I think maybe the online people have us outnumbered today. They're smarter than we are. Um, it is a slick morning here in Kittery, but we appreciate all of those who are gathered here in this place on this day, and especially those of you who are gathering with us from near and far on Facebook. Remember that no matter who you are, or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you are worshiping with us online, let us know that you are there and where you are connecting from, and please know that we are grateful for your presence with us here today. We're happy once again to have our second Sunday jazz trio with us. Jim Rudolph, Rob Gary, and Mike Effenberger today are bringing us some music from Andre Previn, not a name that we normally uh, think of when we think of jazz music. So thank you once again for expanding our reach. As COVID transmission rates remain high and hospitalizations surge, we're asking everyone to remain masked while you are in the building, especially while you are singing. And please choose a seat at least one pew away from you and the nearest worshiper who is not part of your household. None of us wants to be doing this, but this is what we have right now, and we thank you in advance for your cooperation. We continue to monitor the situation and we'll adjust our protocols as the need arises. Love your neighbor care for health care workers, first responders, and those essential workers. Please get vaccinated. Get your booster, wear a mask, and wash your hands. It's our best way through this difficult time, and we can only do this together. If you didn't get a star word last week, if you weren't here, there are star words down on the bulletin board in the vestry, and we invite you to go down and get one. If you're online with us today and don't know what we're talking about, um, take a look at last week's uh, worship service and uh, let us know if you would like a star word, and we will make sure it gets to you. The York Association will be meeting this afternoon at 1.30 at the Elliott Congregational Church, um, but also via Zoom. That's how I will be attending. So if you are interested in going, and if you're just wondering, the Patriots play at 4.30, so it's not going to conflict. Um, if you are interested in attending, please let me know, and I will get the link to you. Night Kitchen will be convening tonight at 7 p.m. to discuss Chapter 3 of Marcus Borg's book, meeting Jesus again for the first time, and there will be a link available for that. Please let us know if you're interested in being part of that. Are there other announcements to share this morning? 
Let us continue in our worship. The call to community is printed in our bulletins. Let us read responsibly. Sisters and brothers, today we recall Jesus came to the waters of baptism. In baptism, our creator claims us and frees us from the power of hatred and death. In baptism, we are joined to Christ, and we are joined to one another, recalling, There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. In baptism, the Spirit of God anoints us for ministry and makes us signs of divine love. It is the mark of acceptance into the church and the beginning of our growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. Therefore, on this day, the whole church, the body of Christ, remembers and celebrates. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is number 176, Sing of God Made Manifest.
John the Baptist called people to repentance to prepare them for the coming of God's reign. Let us too repent that we might be ready for the God who comes to us. Let us pray together. together. Gracious God, we confess that too often we live as though we are fearful, not faithful. When we encounter the waters of chaos and confusion, we don't easily pass through them. But we obsess about the height of the water instead of the sight of the other side. You promise to walk through the rivers with us. Help us believe and help our unbelief. Thus says the God who created you and formed us in God's image. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. This is the good news. I belong to God.
Our first scripture lesson today is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. Let us listen to the word of God. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, <clears throat> and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Let us listen also for the word of God as it comes to us in the gospel according to Luke in the third chapter. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the reading of the lessons. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of these words.
Today, we heard Isaiah's announcement of something new, a change, a turning. With those first two words, but now, he tells us something different is coming. Things used to be one way, he's saying, but now, look around. Something new is happening. Can you see it? These were words of profound hope to a people in exile in Babylon. Words were written, these words were written to make sure that the people 70 years or more removed from their homeland would remember that they would remember that they were chosen for a particular vocation. That the God who formed them and claimed them and named them, that that God still loves them. That even in exile, God is with them. Even in unfamiliar places, God remembers even beyond the limits of their imagination, God is working to fulfill the promise. And it begins with those two words. But now. It's a beautiful text, isn't it? Thank you, Nadine, for sharing it so beautifully. Unfortunately, it doesn't really give us what we really want, what we really need. Because what we want, what we want are answers. How long, O Lord? And there are no hard and fast answers here. Not even any equivocating answers. No crystal ball. It doesn't tell us what we really want, and that's what do we do to make everything all right. It does tell us, as if we didn't already know, that sometimes life can be hard. But it tells us that there's something else beyond what we can see. Things used to be one way, but now, but now something new is happening. Once it seemed like there was no way, but now there is a way. Of course, what we're looking for really is somebody to tell us that everything will be fine. That by the end of the month, COVID will be gone and our choir will be sitting back here singing and everybody will regather in the pews. And we'll still, we'll still have it available online. But in these uncertain days, we want answers. We want to know. God, take us out of this mess that we are in and put us in that new place. Put us in that place beyond what we see, beyond what we know. Put us in that promised land. But of course, we have to walk the road. We have to make that journey. Isaiah doesn't say, but now God is just going to plunk you down in that promised land. He says, it's not if, but when you pass through the waters. It's not if, but when you walk through the fire. Isaiah does say that the waters will not overwhelm you that the fires will not consume you. But 
But he doesn't tell them they're not going to get wet. And he doesn't tell them they're not going to feel the heat. The promise is that they will not be alone. The promise is that God will be with them and with us and will see us through. The promise is that others will be walking this journey beside us. And maybe just like us, they'll be a little soggy and a little singed and maybe a little tired, maybe needing a nap. But the promise is that we will not be alone. Speaking of not being alone, Luke tells us that crowds of people have ventured out into the wilderness to hear what John has to say. And these are those same people, several generations removed, those same soggy, singed, tired people that Isaiah was writing to. And they're still looking for that promise. They're asking questions. They're wondering, they're hoping, they're dreaming. They're thinking that maybe this time something new is happening. And they hear John's words and wonder what that world might look like. Luke tells us the people are expectant, that they're hopeful, and maybe they're even a little bit fearful because he's talking about this threshing floor and chaff and wheat and cleansing fire, and maybe they're wondering where they fit into all this. Wondering if there's a part for them to play. Wondering if they're going to get called on to do something they really don't want to do. And Jesus is out there among them, just another face in the crowd. And he just appears there in this mass of people doesn't say anything. He just shows up. He's baptized along with all the other people there. But now, suddenly, everything is different. He's claimed and named. You are my beloved. With you I am well pleased. At our baptism, we too are named and claimed. Not for special treatment, not for ease, not for prosperity, not for health. but for our particular task in the world. Jesus doesn't say, relax. All you who want to follow me, just take a seat here on the couch. I got this. And for those of you who are at home watching on a couch, I'm not talking to you. What did Jesus say? Take up your cross and follow me. He says, step into the waters of justice making. And I will be with you. Feed the hungry. Shelter those without homes. Welcome the outcast. Go out and find them and bring them in. 
He says, dare to walk through the fires of speaking truth to power. I will be there. Work for peace. Be a voice for justice and reconciliation. Look around you and imagine something new. Envision what God is calling you to be. What God is calling us to be. Can you see it? At his baptism, Jesus was affirmed for who he already was. A child of God. Beloved. But now, but now, I've got something else for you to do. And we're not quite there yet, but the first thing that happens after Jesus gets baptized, he goes out into the wilderness. And that is the very same gift that we receive at this font. At this font, we are claimed and named God's beloved. Claimed as one of God's children, named to be the hands and feet and breath of Christ in the world, reminded that we too are God's beloved. You too are God's beloved. And today... As we hear about Jesus being baptized, or perhaps we look forward to our own baptisms, reminded again in this hour who we already are, God's beloved, singled out each by name and beloved but now with something new to do. On a normal Sunday, this is the point in worship when I would invite you to come forward to remember or envision your own baptism. I would take water from the font and put it on your forehead and tell you that you are named and claimed as God's beloved child. But now, but now things are different. And we're going to have to wait for that. But today we remember these questions posed to us at the font or asked of our parents when they bring us forward. Do you promise by the grace of God to be a disciple, to follow in the name of Jesus Christ, to resist oppression, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? And do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in your faith and to be a faithful member of the church, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering God's mission in all the world? And then we would come forward. And water would be poured and some tears would be shed, and we would be named and claimed. But now we cannot do that. So I'm going to share some words from our dear friend, Marin Tirabasi, who will help us to take this understanding of baptism with us out into the world. From these seats, from our couches and kitchen tables out into the world. Every time we turn on the faucet or off 
the tea kettle. Every time we fill a washing machine or empty the bathtub. Every time we boil a potato or shampoo the hair of someone who can't raise their arms. Every time we irrigate our crops or our eyes. Every time we diaper a baby, shed a tear with a friend, or offer a stranger something to drink. Every time we listen to raindrops fall, watch snow melt, or just complain about the drip from a pipe we can't afford to repair. Every time, every time, we remember we are baptized. Maybe it happened in a church or a lake or a river long ago or yesterday. Maybe we are still swimming toward it or it never happened and never will. God doesn't mind. Theologically speaking, the faucet or the stranger, either one would be enough. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to pray with me the prayer of recommitment that is in your bulletin. By your Spirit, Almighty God, grant us love for others, joy in serving you, peace in disagreement, patience in suffering, kindness toward all people, goodness in evil times, faithfulness in temptation, gentleness in the face of opposition, self-control in all things, then strengthen us for ministry in your name. Amen. Amen. As we gather to worship God in prayer, I invite you, as always, to lift up names and situations that should be in our prayers today and through this week. Keep Natalie in our prayers. Yes. Craig. Friends and family of Craig. Norman and Timothy. Friends of Janet Kobu Marshall? Janice. Janice. Patty. Patty. Keep Fred in our prayers. There are many who are Recovering from COVID right now, and we wish them speedy recoveries. Let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Loving God, we glimpse you stirring in the sunrise of each new day, even in the frozen soil of winter, brooding over every bulb and seed, 
whispering quietly to us as we step into our future. For generations you have called forth faithful people, called them each by name to love and serve and care for this world. We gather because we've heard your still small voice. We gather because we've seen that star. We gather because we've felt that emptiness that only you can fill. We gather because we want to be near you, to share this sense of call with one another, marveling at the power of your presence, bringing our thanks for all the places where we know the healing power of your creative love. Hear us as we lift our hearts to you, full of praise and thanks. When we gather together, we carry with us hurts and hungers, some of them well up from deep within, and we release them to you. God of healing and wisdom and compassion, we are so thankful that not only do you call us to move out beyond the comfort of our experience, but that you go with us there, promising to keep flood and fire from overwhelming us. Hear us today as we offer you prayers of our hearts, prayers for those in pain and grief, prayers for those who teeter on the edge. We lift up to you today, friends and family of Craig, and of Janice, pray for Natalie, and Norman, and Timothy, and Fred, for Patty, for those whose names we lift up to you now, and those whose needs are known to you alone. Hear these and all our prayers, Almighty God, for we lift them in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to the time in our worship when we are invited to respond with a financial offering. For those of you who are guests of ours online today, please feel no obligation to participate. Your presence with us is gift enough. If you would like to make a contribution to the ministries of Second Christian Church, we invite you to visit our website. For those of you who are gathered here today, we will not pass the plate. They are on the table and we invite you to put your offering in there on your way out. But as our second Sunday jazz trio offers their gift to us today, I invite you to search your heart for a gift that you too can give, whether it's to this church or this community. We all have a part to play and all have gifts to give. Let us worship God with our gifts and our tithes and our offerings.
Let us bless our gifts. Accept these gifts of our hearts and hands, O God. Let them give you honor and glory as we serve the needs of your people. And let the called and beloved of God say, Amen. Our closing hymn is one that we sing every year when our jazz uh, trio is here. Um, a uh, Dave and Iola Brubeck collaboration, God's Love Made Visible. Let's stand and sing this one. Now, Holy One, go with us wherever you may lead us. Guide us through the wilderness, protect us from the storm, bring us home rejoicing at the wonders you have shown us. Bring us home rejoicing once again unto our doors. Amen. Thank you.